So starting off on kinetics. What is kinetics the study of, first off? Rates, how fast? That's it. So later on in the semester, you guys got a little dose of it earlier last semester, but a little later in the semester, we'll have a whole chapter on what's called thermodynamics. So in thermodynamics can tell you everything about a chemical reaction, whether it should happen or not. We call it spontaneity. So whether it's endothermic or exothermic, gives off heat or absorbs heat, whether it results in an increase in entropy or a decrease in entropy, randomness. So it turns out all the equilibrium constants are actually going to come from thermodynamics as well. So everything about a reaction comes from thermodynamics except one thing, and that one thing is how fast. And that's what kinetics tells us. So if we look at this lovely stack of papers here, should this stack of papers react with the O2 molecules in the air and burst into flames? Actually, it should. So thermodynamics says it's going to happen. But kinetics says not so fast, literally not so fast. It turns out that the activation energy for this combusting is huge. It's a huge activation energy. And at room temperature, virtually zero molecules have enough energy to overcome that activation energy barrier. Now notice, if I wanted this to burn, I might stick a flame under it, stick under the paper or something like that. But what if I just stuck it in the oven, cranked up the oven with the paper burn in the oven, even without a flame? Eventually, yeah. High enough temperature, eventually some of the molecules at higher temperatures would get enough energy to overcome that activation energy barrier, and the paper would indeed burn at higher temperatures. So thermodynamics tells me, yeah, paper's going to burn. But kinetics says not so fast. All right. So kinetics, first thing we're going to talk about. Our rate expressions. So a rate expression is simply that. It's a way of expressing the rate of a reaction. So and the one I'm going to look at here. Is this one. So let's say I had this chemical reaction going. How many different ways would there be to measure the rate of this reaction, or at least easy ways? There'd be three. I could measure how fast he's disappearing. I could measure how fast he's appearing, or he's appearing. There's three ways. If I have a way to measure any of these three concentrations, I can monitor how fast this reaction's going. So in this case, one way to do that would be to monitor the change in the concentration of nitrogen over time. So, and that would be a valid rate expression, a way of measuring the rate of this reaction. Just follow the concentration of nitrogen and see how it changes over time. I could do the same thing with hydrogen. And do the same thing, but I have a problem. Do, are nitrogen and hydrogen produced at the same rate? No, which, one, which one's produced faster? Hydrogen, how many times faster? Three times faster. For every one nitrogen molecule, I get three hydrogen molecules. It's produced three times faster. And so if I call this the rate, well, this can't be also the rate because they're two different numbers. This is a three times bigger than this quantity right here. And so for a valid rate expression, we divide by the coefficient. And that way now, yeah, these are now equal. And both are valid rate expressions, valid ways of measuring the rate of this reaction. So I can do the same thing with a reactant. So, but is this lovely quantity equal to the two I've already put up here? No. So what do I got to do based on what we just said about coefficients? Got to divide by two, or same thing as multiplying by one half, same diff. But is the concentration of ammonia being a reactant going up or going down? It's going down. When something's going down, it's decreasing, what kind of change is that? It's a negative change. This is actually a negative number. These are both positives, and that's fine. We always define rates as positive numbers. But this, unfortunately, is a negative number. So if I want to call it a rate, for reactants, we've got to put a big, fat negative sign out front. That way, a negative times a negative comes out to give me an overall positive rate. Everybody cool with that? So these are valid rate expressions. You may get a question on the exam that just says, for this reaction, which of the following is a valid rate expression? And any one of these three could be the correct answer. Or they might put all three and then put choice D as all the above, right? Cool. The other kind of question you might see with this, though, is just comparing actual numerical rates of different reactants and products in the same reaction. For example, if I told you that the rate of change of hydrogen 
over time was equal to 12 molar per minute. 12 molar per minute. Then the question is, how quickly is nitrogen being produced? Well, here's the deal. If you're actually dealing with numbers, I would highly recommend you don't actually use the rate expressions. Don't go there. Just look at the stoichiometry. So who's being produced faster, nitrogen or hydrogen? Hydrogen, how many times faster? Three times faster. And so if the hydrogen's being produced at 12 molar per minute, how fast is the nitrogen being produced? Yeah, three times less, less, four molar per minute. Cool. And what if I asked for the rate of change of ammonia? What would his rate of change over time be? Which is, what is two thirds of 12? Not quite six. Not quite six, that's a half. Eight, but it's not just eight, it's awesome. It's negative eight. Now here's the deal, and this one's just a little bit tricky. What if instead of this last question here, I asked for the rate of, if I can spell it, consumption of ammonia, NH3. So this time I've asked for the rate of consumption. Because I've used the word consumption, what do I know? I know it's being used up and its concentration is going down. And if I already know it's going down, I already know it's negative. You don't include a negative as part of your answer. This would just simply be 8 molar per minute. 8 molar per minute. You sat in the front row. That was your first mistake today. What's your name? Shahab. Shahab? Shahab. Shahab. So Shahab, and if I'm butchering your name, I'm really sorry. But so what you guys don't know is that Shahab is a big time gambler, big time gambler. And so if I knew he went to the casino last night. So and I asked him, what was your net change in your worth as of your visit last night to the casino? So and if he said negative five thousand dollars, I was like, ooh, rough night, because that would tell me he lost five thousand dollars, right? However, if I knew he was a terrible gambler. And so I immediately, instead of saying, what's your change in your net worth? I said, how much did you lose last night? Because I knew he lost, you know, he always loses. So that's how the casinos stay in business, by the way. So how much did you lose? And if he says negative $5,000, I'm going to scratch my head and be like, does that mean you gained $5,000? But notice, if I already said, how much did you lose? You're never going to use that negative sign. Then you just say, I lost 5000 Same thing here. If I'm already talking about a rate of consumption, then we already know it's going down. And so we just give the absolute value, 8 molar per minute. But if I just simply ask for the rate of change, well, then I don't know if it's going up or down. you got to tell me. And so for reactants, they're going to be negative. Everybody see the difference in the way the question might be worded? If it's rate of change, for reactants, they're negative. For products, they're positive. So, and that's, so the, the only time you really got to worry about, because notice products are always going to be positive numbers. But for the reactant, if I just ask for rate of change, that's when it's negative. But if I say rate of consumption, that's just the absolute value.